Hello, my name is Mike Rayner and I'm from eWrench.com. This video is about how to connect, configure, and boot a Raspberry Pi computer to the graphical user interface. Of course, one of the things you already have to have done is to have the Raspbian Wheezy operating system installed to an SD card. Outcome for this video, you'd insert the SD secure digital card and make all the connections to the Raspberry Pi mainboard boot the Raspbian Wheezy operating system and configure it for the first run, expand the storage to take up the entire SD card, boot to a graphical user interface, and then I'll show you how to return to the configuration menu from the command line if you want to make any later changes. And here are the places where we're going to connect to. You've got the USB, two connectors each, Ethernet cable, HDMI connector, power supply, used a phone charger where you put in the HC card or the secure digital card. Requirements secure digital high capacity card with a Raspbian Wheezy OS operating system installed should have a minimum of 2 gigabytes of storage the Raspbian Wheezy operating system takes about 1.75 gigabytes but really you should have something it would be better if you had a larger than a 2 gigabyte card so you can put some other things on here HDMI, high definition multimedia interface cable. Raspberry Pi takes a standard size interface, not a mini. A monitor, this isn't shown on the requirements graphic, but monitor needs an HDMI input, or if you've got a cable, it could take a DVI input if the cable is an interface between the two. A USB universal serial bus connection to a keyboard and mouse. Since the Raspberry Pi has two USB ports. You can have one for the keyboard and one for the mouse. What I'm going to be showing you is just a simple one that uses an infrared interface to get to the keyboard and the mouse. An Ethernet cable connection. This is optional, especially if you want to upgrade it. And then your power cable. In my case, I've used a phone charger connection. Here's everything except the monitor. You've got a mouse. I've seen them for about $4. Keyboard for $4 and then the USB attachment. In my case I used a uh, one with infrared and altogether that infrared with the USB attachment and the mouse and keyboard was about twenty dollars. An Ethernet cable that's coming off my router. HDMI cable that goes to the uh, monitor or TV. Uh, two gigabyte SDHC. I'm actually using an eight gigabyte HDSC card that uh, got out of a camera and the power supply and I got mine from a cell phone. Uh, here's the connections order. The first thing you want to do is install your SDHC card uh, and the last thing you want to do is install your power supply connector. Connections close-up. This is a close-up of all the connections. Uh, basically same thing as the last page but uh, you've got a little bit closer look at everything. If you need some additional info, you've got the Raspberry Pi website. If you want to make a case, you've got a, a, a place where you can actually print out a cardboard case or a thin, uh, heavy-duty paper case and, and you know bend it. And the Raspberry Pi wiki, which really, if you have any problems, this is a great place to go to uh, because they've got bug reports and everything in there. Uh, disclaimer, basically, I've tried to do the best I can. Before starting this section of the video, you should already have made all connections as outlined in the previous section of the video. Starting up Raspberry Pi. Setting up and trying to configure itself. Goes into configure Ration setting, raspy config. So the first thing we're going to do is expand the root FS. Basically, when the operating system was installed on the SD card, only two gigabyte of an eight gigabyte card was filled up, or uh, partitioned, or even formatted. So we'll just expand the root to cover the entire eight gigabyte. Boot partition has been resized. File system will be large, enlarged upon the next reboot. Click OK. And one thing we want to do is configure the keyboard. Set the keyboard lay. 
laid out uh, leave over scan as long as everything looks okay leave over scan alone and it may take a second or two for keyboard to show up okay here we have generic 105 keyboard again I'm going to hit this enter and it may take a second or two this one this time it happened real quickly so you notice it says English if you're in England you're okay but if you're not in England like this computer is in the United States so I'm gonna to have to look for a uh, United States one so we got English US down here and that's what I'm gonna pick and we've got all kinds of English US and I'm gonna just pick the English US plane click OK and just pick the default you're going to have to make whatever decision that you want whenever you know wherever depending on wherever you're at the compose key I'll cause the computer to interpret the next few keystrokes of the combination order produce a character not found on the keyboard I'm going to have no compose key and then I'm going to choose control alt backspace as a way to terminate the X server and just use a tab to go to the yes click enter and it might take a second or two to uh, reconfigure and so now we've got the keyboard reconfigured So now you can change a password if you want. The first user is Pi, P I, and the password is Raspberry, R A S P B E R R Y, all in lowercase. But I'm going to leave that alone. Set the locale. Going to leave that alone. But I am going to change the time zone. There's no clock on the Raspberry Pi, but it does pull uh, time off the internet. And I'm going to pick you know where I'm at US and Eastern and if you're hooked to the internet it can pull down the local time but there is no like in a normal computer which has a battery that keeps a clock on it's not available on a uh, it's not there on a uh, Raspberry Pi and one thing you may want to do is configure overclocking. I found that the Raspberry Pi is very slow. Of course, you really don't want to overheat the Raspberry Pi. I like to overclock it at a modest one. Just take it up to 800 megahertz. Click Enter. Set overclock to preset modest and click OK. If you want SSH, uh, so that you can access it from a network connection I'm going to set this to yes it's going to be whatever your ch choice is that's because I have a network cable connected one of the things when you first start up you to get to the GUI you don't want to use the SSH you want to actually uh, when you start your de desktop on the boot or you actually want to start you actually want to start the desktop and make I'm sorry make sure that your Raspberry Pi is connected to a monitor of some kind and this gets your desktop settings if it's not connected to a monitor when you first start it it's possible that you know, your desktop settings after a while you would connect to monitor is not going to be a accurate or uh, it may not look the way you want it. Uh, I've had to do resettings on these. And also update. You can try and upgrade. Update. I'm just going to leave the upgrade and updates out. You, that's dependent on a network connection. You can also do this from the uh, command line sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade. 
we're going to start the desktop on the boot. And should we boot straight to the desktop? I'm just going to click yes. And now we're going to go down and finish. Hit tab. And we should boot to a desktop. Subsequent boots uh, should be a little bit quicker than this. Now in the desktop you don't have to uh, actually uh, log in as from the terminal. But still remember your uh, default Pi and is the username. There's the desktop. If you actually want to go, you can use the McClory browser. But I'm going to go to the terminal because I want to show you that if you made a mistake uh, or you want to change your, you know, your configuration, you would use sudo, which is super, basically super user. Raspy config. You can go back and actually do the uh, configuration or change some of the configurations. And that's uh, basically the setup after you've made the connections for uh, starting to use Raspberry Pi. Thank you.